Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 of our wave based game mode tutorial series. So this tutorial is all about creating a game mode similar to like zombies, the horde mode where you have enemies coming in waves and you have to deal with them as they arrive. So last episode we created the spawner events so when the over time enemies will spawn at uh, set locations and to go over what we've done with the code again on the begin play uh, at the start of the game on the game mode we built our spawner list a list of all the spawn points inside the level then we start the timer to activate the spawner so on the activate spawner it's getting that list of spawners inside the level choosing one at random and then using it to spawn an enemy okay and this spawn enemy code was on the spawner it's a function on the spawner so where we're at now is we're going to create the uh, the wave based stuff so we have a wave number a number of enemies per wave and when enemies are all killed in a the wave they then increase the wave number and then we start spawning again so let's um, create first of all just some variables that we're going to need for this so the first variable we need is going to be an integer and it's going to be called wave number and we're going to need another variable for a number of enemies so we're going to see these two numbers being used to handle all this compile it and then set your wave number default value to be one so we start at number one and the number of enemies to start at number five so we start with five enemies spawning and then uh, before it goes on to the next wave so let's first of all check uh, before we can do any code on this it'd be handy to actually see these numbers on the screen so let's uh, build the widgets for these and make them show up on the screen so in my wave mode folder let's just get rid of my old one Um, we're going to create a new widget and it's going to be called wave number and open it up we don't need a canvas panel so we can get rid of that uh, all we need for this is a horizontal box and inside the horizontal box two text fields the first one it's content on the right hand side in the text box is going to be called uh, just type in wave semicolon or colon rather than semicolon and then the next one is going to be one that changes now I'm going to put in curly brackets to indicate that that is going to change so it makes it obvious to me and I'm also going to increase its font size to be about 50 uh, if I change that to desired so you can see there we go that looks as much as it does okay so I'm happy with that um, we now need to bind this value here to the game modes uh, variable so on your graph editor of the widget up in the top right on the construct we're going to get the game mode and store it as a reference so get game mode and this returns a generic game mode we need to get a specific one so to do that we do a cast like so and now as first one game mode we can now promote that to a variable so now we have that reference stored as a variable and the reason why we need it stored as a variable is because we need a live update to a reference which will have its values changing over time that way we can bind this value to the value inside that reference so to do the binding click on the text field that you want to change then go where it says text and it has bind next to it click on bind and click create binding now we have to do this because the game modes variable is an integer but the text field needs a text variable so we need to convert it from an integer to a text field so drag out your game mode variable and choose get and then from there because it's the first person game mode where it has those variables stored I can just type in get wave number to get the value and then just drag the value onto the pink pin and it will convert it to text for you click compile and that's it and you can see here back in designer it is now bound to that get text function 
click save and you can close that now I'm going to add this to my HUD I'm using my shooter project to do this so you do it where you need to do it uh, but I'm going to put it on my heads up display um, wave number I'm going to put it up there compile and if you get this error if you're doing it in this method it basically means you have to reopen it's a weird little thing reopen this compile it again and then it compiles it's, I, don't, I don't understand why it does that but there you go okay so that's the wave number we now need to get the number of enemies remaining okay so um, we can actually do it all on here actually let's do it all on here save some fiddling about a bit so I want to change this so it's not just a horizontal box I want to put a horizontal box inside a vertical box because I want the wave number here and I want the number of enemies below it so I'm going to right click on the horizontal box in my hierarchy wrap with and then vertical box so now I've got a vertical box with a horizontal box inside it I want another horizontal box so I can just copy and paste copy and paste the horizontal box inside the vertical box so I've got these two going on and I'm just going to change the value here like so and this binding value I need to create a binding for this and the same thing as before but instead of wave number I'm going to get number of enemies And there's our thing. You can put a spacer between the two if you like. Um, that's totally fine. I'm gonna put let's put a spacer. So drag a spacer in. Let's just try and get in between. There we go. And I can choose the size of the spacer. Like so. Yeah, we'll do that. And I'm also going to drag a spacer at the start of this second horizontal box here. Um, we'll do just indent it in a little bit. Uh, we'll do 50. Right, there we go. Um, decrease this. There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. So we've now got this heads up display displaying my wave number and number of enemies. So if I click play now, you can see there, wave number is 1, enemies is 5. Okay, now the numbers like go down or up or anything like that, yeah, but we now got it displaying on the screen so we can test if it works. So let's go back to our game mode. Now in the game mode, let's start off with just the depletion of enemies. So once it's spawn an enemy, we want to de uh, decrement... The number of enemies list um, so if I just drag the number of enemies out and then decrement it with minus minus so every time it spawns enemy that number should go now go down there you go four and then you'll get down to three, then two, and then one. Now it will continue past zero, so we'll start heading to negative numbers now, and it will keep on spawning enemies. What we need it to do is tell it to stop spawning when that value has reached zero. So when we said activate spawner. Before we go to spawn enemy, we need to do a branch check to check the number of enemies that are still remaining. So let's just space this out a bit. Nope. Just double clicked on it by accident. There we go. Like so, just tidy up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I need a branch going into here and I want to check for the condition for this the number of enemies and we'll see if they are greater than zero 
If it's greater than zero, you can now spawn an enemy. This will mean it will stop spawning enemies when it reaches zero. Um, here we can test that out quickly. Four. Three. Two. One. And it should hit zero and then stop spawning enemies. Now we should only see five enemies out in the field. So one, two, three, four. Where's the fifth one? One, two, three, four. Hang on. Let's have a look. So number of enemies is greater than zero. Do, do, do. Spawn enemy, so if it's five, it'll spawn enemy, become four, three. Uh, why is that not working? Let's have a look. So we've got five enemies remaining. I'm not sure it is actually spawning them. Right, there's one. Two. Three, four, five. Oh, yeah, he's doing it. Okay, there you go. So the number of enemies will spawn and it will stop spawning them when it hits zero. Now, when it does hit zero, what we want it to do is we want it to increase then the wave number. So we're going to go down here. And we're going to increment the int of wave number. So when it hits zero, wave number will go up one. Once it goes up one though, we also want to change the number of enemies that needs to spawn. So for that, I'm going to create a function to calculate how many enemies are going to be spawning. So if I go new function, calculate enemy number and my function here is going to require one input and that's going to be the wave number itself um, actually no we don't we, no no we don't need to do that because we've got it here so calculate enemy number uh, we want the wave number get and we want to multiply that by a value um, so we're going to say five now, if I did just like this, um, that means wave 2 will have 10, wave 3 will be 15, and so on and so forth. Um, that will quickly escalate way too much. So rather than doing that, I'm going to do something else to this. So times by 5, and then we're going to minus wave number times by... two so on wave two wave two will go two times five become ten minus two times two is four six okay so increase by one on wave three three times five is fifteen three times two is six becomes nine um, and you can see how it, it, it goes up ex uh, a bit bigger and a bit um, over time um, but it will keep going up and up and up okay so any number is going to be now equal to this I'm going to go create an output and the output is going to be an integer actually we don't need to do that either uh, we can just go number of enemies set there we go okay so we set the new number of enemies so if I go back to my event graph, after we increase the wave number by one, we're going to drag that calculate new enemy value out. Like so. So when it when the wave ends, wave number increases, calculate enemy first enemy number. Meaning that now it'll keep 
go back to spawning them because another enemy is now greater than zero again. And I'll keep doing that on a loop. So wave one. So you've got four. Three. Two. One. Zero. And then we should see wave number increase. And then enemies it also increases. And at that point you can make sound effects, you can make some flashy cutscene, you can do whatever you like and it'll keep spawning and keep going. Okay. So we'll stop there. So the next trick is to make it so that this uh where is it? This part doesn't happen if there are enemies still in the world okay so if the enemies are still in the world it won't increase it'll wait till you've cleared them all first so on the force down here we're going to do a check to see how many exist in the world of that type so we're going to go get uh, all actors of class and we want to get plug that into force and plug that into there not there yet sorry uh, get what actors of class you want to choose the class of enemy and this will return an array we just want the length of this array and that returns how many remain inside the level if that is number is less than or equal to zero that's going to go into a branch Which will then go into true into the rest of it so what that mean is that once it's finished spawning all enemies and enemies is at zero force will happen then it's going to check how many enemies exist in the world by looking at these two so it gets all the enemies in the list counts the list, number of the list if the number of this is less than or equal to zero it's going to again go into true and increase the wave number and calculate enemy number so it will only increase the wave number when I've ran out of enemies and I've killed them all. Okay, so click save, and that is it. Okay, um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to talk about um, specials and how to make specials appear at certain times. So every five waves, you're going to have something special happen. Um, if there's anything particularly you want to see else in the wave mode and how to do wave stuff, uh, please let us know in the comments below, and I'm happy to help you out. Thanks very much and thank you very much for your support um, and look forward to seeing you again soon next time. Bye bye.